Hi weebs, how was your day? Today I will show you an anime titled Tensei Shitara Slime Dadaken Kolias no Yumi. It begins with Yuki, Grandmaster of the Free Union, who asks Raimaru for a special mission. The King of the Kingdom of Kolias has reached old age and the battle for the succession of the throne among the royal family has begun. The main contenders are first Prince Sorza who is backed by the nobility and second Prince Aslan who is backed by the local branch of the Free Guild which has gone rogue and declared their allegiance to him. It's up to Raimaru to infiltrate the Kingdom of Kolias undercover as the great phantom thief Sadaru and deal with the situation. Because the Kolias Kingdom is a member of the Council, they cannot intervene. He also assigns Paolo to help Raimaru. Raimaru will infiltrate the Sorza faction while Paolo will infiltrate the Aslan faction. Depending on the situation, they will choose whose side they are on. Raimaru is still unsure about leaving, but Yuki keeps forcing him. Jeff has also been spying on Raimaru, and knows about the matter. He can help provide a letter of recommendation to Barak, one of the nobles there. Shifon, Jeff's younger sister, is the wife of Barak, and he is worried about the situation there. After Raimaru agrees, Yuki introduces Raimaru to Paolo. Paolo is a B-rank adventurer, careless and thoughtless. He sleeps during the journey, is injured by poison from monster, and he doesn't even have any money. Raimaru then gives him a weapon and potion to be used in an emergency. They arrive at Barok's residence. Paolo is taken away to another room, while Raimaru is greeted by Barak and Chiffon. Barak asks why he came. Raimaru explains that he was only assigned to see the situation there. The next day Raimaru assigns Paolo to ask questions at the adventurer's bar, then he tells Sue to follow him. Chiffon invites Raimaru to meet Zenobia, the younger sister of Sorza and Aslan. They meet Gustav, the royal doctor. Gustav sarcastically taunts them both. After that Chiffon introduces Raimaru to Zenobia. Zenobia is lying weakly on her bed, and she can't see. Raimaru uses his skills to examine Zenobia, and gives medicine to her. After taking the medicine, Zenobia is able to open her eyes. That night, Sue reports to Raimaru about Paolo. Paolo entered the bar, ordered a drink and said something bad about Raimaru. Raimaru then secretly places his clone in Zenobia's room. At dinner, Aslan comes to thank Raimaru for healing Zenobia. He tells him that he wanted to support his brother Sorza, but Sorza had changed. He felt that Sorza had been influenced by Gustav, who also made Zenobia fall ill. He was suspicious because he had not met the king, only Gustav could meet the king. Barak can't just believe him. Aslan explains that Sorza may have become a vampire, because he suddenly became strong, and explains the power of charm, a vampire's technique. Barak channels Aura towards himself and Chiffon to dispel the charm. Aslan plans to storm the palace to defeat Gustav. Raimaru returns to Zenobia's room and sees Sorza blaming Olsen because according to Gustav, Aslan was the one who banned Nevsen from entering the kingdom. After Sorza leaves, Zenobia can feel Raimaru's presence. Raimaru introduces himself as Sadaru. When Zenobia fell ill, she became able to see a person's soul. She can tell that Raimaru was a man who was reincarnated from another world. Zenobia asks Raimaru for help to solve the kingdom's problems. She knows that her brothers are innocent, Gustav is the one controlling behind the scenes. Their conversation is cut short when Gustav comes inside. Raimaru manages to hide, and Gustav uses a curse on Zenobia, and will blame Raimaru for it. Raimaru discusses with Benimaru and Sue to stop the two princes from fighting each other. The next day, Raimaru is captured by royal troops, but he can move places with his clones. He disguises himself as Sadaru to kidnap Zenobia. Meanwhile, Benimaru and Sue stop Aslan's faction from attacking the palace. Benimaru fights Aslan while Sue fights Barak. Aslan and Barak can't match Benimaru and Sue's strength. Sadaru comes with Zenobia. He is able to remove the demon's curse from Zenobia with his power. At the same time, Sorza also comes there. Zenobia explains everything to the two of them that Gustav is the one behind all this. They reconcile and realize that all this time they were being tricked by Gustav. Paul, Gustav's subordinate, who also helped pit Sorza and Aslan against each other, comes to kill them after their plan is discovered. Gustav takes back the power given to Sorza. Gustav and Carl bring out their full power. 
Satoru realizes they are arch demons, one of the strongest races. Gustav uses an isolation barrier to lock in Karl, the two princes, Benimaru, Sue, and Satoru. Karl attacks Sorza but Aslan protects him. Satoru uses his potion to heal Aslan, then he tells Sorza and Aslan to get out of there, because Benimaru, Sue and himself will face Karl. Meanwhile, Paolo, who is outside the barrier, feels helpless. But then he remembers Raimaru who entrusted him with his weapon and potion. Gustav feels anxious seeing Karl being easily defeated. He uses his power to absorb people's negative emotions and Karl's power. At that time, Paolo manages to get Zenobia to run away from there. Gustav chases him, and Paolo is helped by Luminous. Gustav cannot defeat Luminous, and by diverting her attention, he uses Zenobia as a vessel to summon Violet, one of the primordials. Luminous and Violet fight fiercely, and they are equally strong. A disappointed Violet then kills the incompetent Gustav before leaving. Luminous uses her powers to hypnotize Paolo, but he defeated Gustav. Meanwhile, Satoru, Benimaru and Sue catch up with Paolo who is standing next to Gustav's body. Satoru thinks that Paolo defeated Gustavo by chance, because the combined archdemons most likely failed and couldn't maintain its vessel. Satoru leaves his medicine for Zenobia before leaving with Benimaru and Sue. Later, Raimaru is released from prison after the misunderstanding is resolved. Sorza and Aslan ask Raimaru for medicine, and Raimaru hands over the same medicine as Satoru. They learn that Satoru's identity is Raimaru. Not only that, they also find out that Raimaru is actually the king in Jura Tempest. After that, they talk about King of the Coleus. When the royal troops wanted to arrest him, it turned out that the king had died after summoning the archdemons. All problems have been resolved. In a flashback, it turns out that it was Luminous who killed the king after the king let Violet move freely behind the scenes. After that, Sorza will be crowned king, and Aslan will help him in military matters. After Zenobia recovered, her power to see people's souls disappeared. Paolo decides to stay there after being recruited into the royal troops. Raimaru then reports all this to Yuki. Yuki wants to give Raimaru a new mission, but he refuses to hear it. Meanwhile at Coleus, Sorza, Aslan and Zenobia hear that Raimaru has become the new demon king. This anime only contains three episodes, but even so, this anime is very fun to watch. The story is a bit difficult to understand if you haven't watched the previous season, because many characters appear. The storyline is about the battle for succession, and a web of schemes woven by demons and vampires. The animation is great, each character's battles are very beautifully animated. This anime is enough to fill the void, he miss Raimaru and his crew. Thank you for watching this video, make sure to subscribe, and turn on notification.